parties to a transaction might give the transaction a specific form in an attempt to enjoy or avoid certain tax consequences. In Frank Lyon Company v. United States, the Supreme Court considered whether a transaction's tax consequences follow its given form or its underlying substance. In 1965, Worth and Bank and Trust Company began planning construction of a new building for its bank and offices. To finance the project and overcome regulatory hurdles, Worthen arranged a mortgage from New York Life Insurance Company and a sale and leaseback transaction with Frank Lyon Company. Under the agreement, Worthen would sell the building to Lyon and Lyon would secure a mortgage from New York Life and lease the building back to Worthen for a long-term lease. Worthen maintained the option to buy back the building by repaying the mortgage loan with interest and Worthen's rental payments were credited toward the buyback price. Federal and state regulators approved the transaction, and the parties proceeded as planned. Lyons secured the mortgage loan from New York Life and was solely responsible for repaying the loan, regardless of Worthen's rental payments. In addition to rent, Worthen paid the taxes and maintenance costs for the building. Lyon participated in the transaction as a way to diversify its investments and never indicated any specific intention to gain special tax benefits. Lyon claimed federal tax deductions for its mortgage interest payments and the building's depreciation. However, the Commissioner of Internal Revenue disallowed the deductions, determining that Lyon didn't own the building for tax purposes. Lyon sued the United States government in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Arkansas, seeking a refund for the deductions. The district court found in Lyon's favor, holding that the transaction was a bona fide sale and leaseback transaction. Therefore, the district court found that the form given by the parties was consistent with the actual substance of the transaction and that Lyon was thus the true owner of the building for tax purposes. However, the United States Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit reversed, finding in part that aside from the tax benefits Lyon received, Worthen enjoyed all of the benefits and burdens of owning the building. Therefore, the Court of Appeals held that, despite its given form, the transaction's true substance was a financing scheme under which Worthen effectively retained ownership of the building for tax purposes. Lyon appealed, and the United States Supreme Court granted cert.